enemies of the process list. Uh, we've we've done this. This is a an AU idea. AU started this. I want to say four years ago. I think this is the first the the fourth one that we've done. The enemies of the process list. I think the first one he revealed on air, and then we've been writing them ever since since he started writing for us. So what we did was all of us submitted our one through ten or one through fifteen lists, and then AU calculated it, and we put it together, and we all wrote. The we all wrote different blurbs for it, and it's up at writesrickysanchez.com. Wanted to just get some thoughts from from both of us on each one on the top fifteen. Um, number fifteen, Glenn Robinson the third. I actually like that he's on the list. I, I AU seemed like he was pushing for GR three. <laughs> I think it is funny how little he wanted to be here. He complained immediately. It took him forever to get here. Right and. I don't think he's an enemy now, but when he goes to a different team, he'll definitely be a guy that we don't like. So I think I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah. 14 Tatum, who I don't even think I had on my top 10 list, but obviously, did you have him high? Where did you have Tatum? Do you uh, remember? I don't remember. As of right now, look, the things I feel about Tatum, as uh, Jerome said last week, thanks for not picking him. He really got that in right at the end. He did. What he a definitely fucking did. Asshole. Yeah. And I, to me, it's just like there is not a um, valid reason to hate him, and I hate him, and will forever, and root against him his whole career. He seems like a good dad. He seems pretty corny. Mm-hmm. Um, he works hard, and I hate him. End of story. Yeah, it just doesn't. It doesn't hurt me anymore. In fact, and and this I think this will come out, uh, or this came out today. We did the the top thirty rank, the top twenty nine rankings of who, what other teams we hate the most. I don't even hate the Celtics as much as I should anymore. And I know it's a character flaw. I, I know, but but it it's buried deep within my anger at the Sixers is why I don't hate the Celtics so much. It's not that I like the Celtics. It's it's just my jealousy has gone from anger to sort of like, I don't know, looking at them across the room and how beautiful I think some of them are. And I just, I can't be mad at them anymore. We were a Knicks fan and you're a Sixers fan, so Celtics are naturally next. Yeah. Uh, yes, it, it really is on the list. Uh, 13, Tobias Harris's contract. Um, one thing I wrote, I got to do the write-up for this, is that the thing we have to look forward to is that in three years it'll be the best contract in the NBA because it'll be expiring. It is. It does say a lot that he is a good player and obviously a good person, and still, it's just fucking awful, that contract. It is really yeah. just so bad. It's tough. I mean, we, talk, uh, we talked about this before. Like, I can separate him from the contract. Mm-hmm. It's not his fault. It wasn't That's Brian why we Howard's put the fault. contract on the list. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it, I think he gets a lot of it. It's like, I think he's a good player that if he was just allowed to play, like, straight up power forward and not, you know, the smallest of eight power forwards on this team, then I think it'd be a lot better. But it's more clunky with that. I I would love to see him back with Doc, shooting threes more regularly, quicker, you know, having a quick trigger without having to do this sort of, you know, stare your guy down for a few seconds and pull up in his face from 18. Um, But if, if if he's... Continues his progression defensively. He's a good leader of the team and takes more threes more regularly and, and maybe even adds an element of getting to the line more to his game. Would love that. He's a guy who works on his game. It stands to reason he could work on that part of his game. Uh, then I hope the contract is not as bad. But it, right now it, it, it is for sure. As I've said, the collective bargaining agreement that the owners have with the players would not have allowed anyone to pay Tobias Harris more money than the Sixers paid them. They paid Tobias Harris the most amount of money you are allowed to pay a player under the collective bargaining agreement. That's right. It is fucking hilarious. Number 12, COVID-19. I mean, pretty obvious why it would be an enemy of the process. Yeah, Uh, I wrote about it just because it's like, well, the Sixers were a good, an elite home team. They were the best home team in mm -hmm. the league. And they were the, what, 23rd best 
road team in the league. That's the one advantage we had. And then here comes a pandemic, and it's like you got to play in fucking where MCW and Markel Fultz live. <laughs> what a quote. Eleven. You know, I almost feel like this is even high because it, it does seem like everybody is on the same page anymore. But 11, mainstream Philadelphia media composite guy, almost doesn't exist anymore. Even the people who hated us hate the owners now. I, there's a, a very, there's just not a lot of anti-process people anymore. It, it's okay, just Occasionally, there's some strays that come out. Yeah. And you, and you see, and like, you know, people talking about that analytics were the problem in this situation right. just drives me insane just for just sheer like journalistic responsibility. Like someone should hold that to account. There should be a fact check situation going on where it's like, well, no, no. I mean, or like explain yourself because it's not the case. Number 10, Al Horford. Sorry. It was destined. This had to happen. I mean, there's really almost no chance this wasn't going to happen. Yeah, we, we should have asked Jerome about Al, we, and we didn't. It is amazing we didn't ask him about Al. I think it stems from us not wanting to talk about it. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about anything but the... <laughs> probably, what, probably that. <laughs> Number nine and eight. I, I don't think I voted for either of them in my top ten. I definitely know I didn't vote for eight, because I felt like they were more enemies of me than they were of the process, but maybe I had Butler in there. So number nine, Jimmy Butler... And then number eight, J.J. Redick and Tommy. Yeah. I don't think I had Jimmy in there. I did have J.J. Redick and Tommy. I, just did, for, I did maybe not. It's, maybe that's more. I, I can't disassociate what's us, what's the process, what's right. what. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, Sixers Adam fucking hates J.J. Redick and Tommy. I mean, he had them at number four, he told me. I, I'm not going to read every everything from everyone, but uh, the write-up for J.J. Redick and Tommy if I'm being entirely honest, I put these two people above uh, people who have objectively been much more detrimental to the downfall of the Sixers, but I couldn't right. help myself. These two people make me viscerally angry every time I think about them, <laughs> and this was my avenue to express that. Why does J.J. Reddick get to have a podcast? Who on earth is Tommy? Will we figure out who Tommy is before we find out who Dietrich's Burnergate source was? Was Tommy Dietrich's Burnergate source? So. Could have been. Number seven, Brian Colangelo. You know... Even though not part of it, still just how could he not be top 10 ranked? Mm -hmm. It says a lot that we ourselves are number six ahead of Brian Colangelo. At this I, point, I think that that's right. Yeah. I think if you look back historically, we will rise every year. <laughs> and, uh, number five, team collaborative GM, um, Alex Rucker, Ned Cohen, uh, you know, Elton obviously involved in that, but the yeah. team collaborative GM number five, obviously. You know, did, we did say we did say we wanted the the front office to, you know, heads to roll. I've I famously said the chef should get fired, and nobody did. Um, and some some people have like at least shifted around. There's been some yeah. movement. I've sort of redirected all of my ire to Scott O'Neill, um, and and pretty much blamed him and only him for everything. It's fun to have, like, one villain. It's just easier for me to digest. Um, but I will say at least that they, at least they sca scapegoated a couple people. Well, is, the, that, the, is that a positive? Well, I mean, the two people who actually left the organization were Sam Hinkie hires, which is very funny. And it does that seem as if the one person that actually got scapegoated was Alex Rucker, right. who is the uh, person who is most concerned with public narrative, uh, which I guess, so I guess they did something. I don't want anybody to be out of a job as long as they're not in the fucking room, but Scott O'Neill is still in the room and they really, they really didn't do anything that we asked. No. <laughs> it, it, yeah. I mean, uh, number four, Jerry no. Colangelo, as you said, you, you wrote about Jerry in this one and could have just done nothing. Would have made a great line from you. Uh, if Jerry had come in, just wearing a robe and slippers, hit the buffet, orchestrated a C minus -ish, ish ish Smith trade, and insisted the practice facility only played Frankie Valley music while cashing that paycheck. None of this would have happened. All he had to do was be the cool old guy, but he didn't want to be the cool old guy. He wanted to fucking suck. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> Bye.
bringing his son to work day since 2009 when <laughs> Jake was born. Oh, so good. Number three, Adam Silver. Uh, I think you could make an Adam Silver argument for number one. I think you could. Uh, mm-hmm. Adam Silver. If we're re- tracking it back, mm-hmm. it, would be, it would be from Adam Silver. Actually, I would say Scott O'Neill. Here's the game of telephone. Scott O'Neill to Adam Silver to Jerry Colangelo right. to Brian Colangelo. Now back to Scott O'Neill. Right. Uh, which brings us to number two, Josh Harris and David Blitzer. Right. I mean, do we need to say anything else? I don't think so. No. And then number one, um, maybe the best thing you've ever ever written uh, on Scott O'Neill, the number one enemy of the process. Sick dude, fucking rad. You're the patch king. Yeah. We always yeah. do a new... I, I've been trying to think of a shirt idea for Black Friday. We always do a new shirt on Black Friday and put it on sale. Maybe sick dude, fucking rad. You're the patch king. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a patch on it. Something. Can't imagine why anyone would want to wear that. Just me <laughs> staying up late past midnight, writing mean things about Scott O'Neill that I then ask AU to edit out if it's too mean. <laughs> and by the way, AU will not edit it out if it's too mean. He's he not has the before. Right- he oh, has about he? other stuff, I think. Okay. Uh, congratulations, Scott O'Neill, the number one enemy of the process. You've been, you've been working toward this for so long, and you're finally there. Congratulations uh, to Scott O'Neill. 